Hello everyone. Welcome to attend the MAE4063 Mechanical Vibrations course. This is the three credits undergrad level course, and my name is Sharon Jin. I'm the instructor of this course for this term. In today's first lecture, I would like to first give a brief introduction about the definition of mechanical vibrations and why it is important to study the vibration in both theory and practical implementations. Later, I would like to show a syllabus which uh, explains the content of this course and finally uh, about the specific schedule of this course in terms of homework, uh, exams, and project. This is uh, information about myself. I'm now currently a assistant professor at the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at OSU. Actually, I just joined the school starting from this month. Therefore, I'm very new. So, I'm very happy to uh, work with all of you to make this uh, learning and teaching experience an uh, enjoyable uh, process. This lists my email address and just please send me an uh, email when you have any problem or question uh, about the content and the lectures. Uh, I, I would like to be very happy to uh, help. About my research area, I am mainly focused on the manufacturing process. Uh, specific, specifically about the micro and nano precision manufacturing. Mm, there are two uh, specific directions. First is about the machining mechanics uh, which relates to the material processing. Basically how the material behaves during the cutting when the workpiece interacts with the tool. The second uh, direction is about dynamics. I am um, interested in working on the modeling of the machining dynamics to predict the machine to vibration, the to vibration, uh, the cutting to vibration, and the vibration of the workpiece. So this direction uh, relates closely to the content about this specific course in this term. Now let's talk about the vibration. Vibration, by definition, is that uh, any motion that repeats itself after an interval of time can be described as a process of vibration. There are a lot of examples uh, in our daily life or in industrial uh, field which deals with our vibrations. For example, uh, Everyone must know a swing of a pendulum. For example, uh, the pendulum of an uh, old style clock. And when you see a kid uh, sitting on the swing in the playground. Also, uh, there are musical instruments. For example, whistles, drums, pianos, uh, violins, and so on. All these instruments deal with uh, either the strings or some other portion of the uh, instruments to generate different uh, pitches of sound uh, under the uh, under the excitations also the earthquake is a huge vibration caused by the energy released uh, in the earth uh, and can cause a lot of damage to the house or uh, the structures. Also, there are a lot of others, like automotive. When you are driving a car, you feel the strong vibration when the car is uh, driving on the uneven road, and so on. So. Why, why should we uh, study the vibration? 
First, it because excessive vibration causes can cause huge failure of the structure. In most cases, uh, the vibration is very harmful for the human life. But in the, some other few cases, we can also use uh, the vibration to benefit the uh, industrial applications. Here, I would like to share first share a video about a famous uh, engineering accident which is based on the design of the bridge. This is called Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which is built was which was built in 1940s uh, in Washington State. It was built in July 1st, 1940, and after four months, it the whole bridge collapsed, clap, clapped, and uh, under the strong wind. Here we can see the bridge which is made by concrete and steel. Actually it's twisted like a soft noodle under a strong wind. Here we can see that the whole 
So the engineers who investigated this accident afterwards attributed this damage of the bridge uh, to a physical phenomenon known as aeroelastic flutter. Also, as we can clearly see that the resonance of the bridge caused by the uh, blow of the wind generates the twisting and uh, torsional modes of the structure which is also one of the reasons uh, generating the damage. Nowadays, when any structure is designed, the, for example, the building, the bridge, the uh, aircraft, the vibration analysis has to be conducted before uh, they are really put into the actual, actual applications. So, the purpose of this course is to provide a theoretical foundation in order to facilitate the design of the structure and also analyze an uh, existing part in order to optimize the whole structure and the process from the uh, vibration point of view. Here shows another example uh, you may get uh, be more familiar with. And here it shows the upper bound, upper uh, part of the vehicle, which is supported by some uh, spring uh, elements and the spring damper elements. For these elements, we will deal with them a lot in the remaining of this course. So, the stiffness of the spring and the locations they have to be uh, designed properly in order to uh, support the car and make the driver and the passengers to feel com comfortable even the car is driving on the uneven uh, road. There are also some other uh, instruments or uh, parts which are related to our daily life. For example, the as I explained earlier, the musical instrument, for example, the piano. The strings are tightly uh, stretched uh, and by adjusting the uh, diameter and length of the string and change the boundary conditions, they are able to generate uh, different pitches of sound. Also, when someone plays uh, tennis, they would like to use a vibration dampener, uh, which is normally made of uh, rubber or plastic. This dampener changes the 
structure of the string inside the racket a little bit. So when the ball hits the racket, some sound or vibration mode of string can be modified in order to make the uh, player more comfortable. Actually, not all the vibrations are harmful for the human life. There are a lot of applications which make use of vibration in the real application. For example, the first figure shown here is called vibratory finishing machine. There is a large bowl which contains the uh, workpiece and the uh, medium, which is normally uh, composed of uh, stones or chips. When the machine is in working, the bow vibrates and uh, in certain frequencies and amplitudes. Then the medium can uh, deburr the workpiece or uh, to polish the uh, surface in order to reach uh, satisfied uh, surface quality. The second figure shown here is a uh, vibratory conveyor which is uh, widely used in food industry. Normally, the vibrations are used to, uh, to sort, to align, and to sieve the materials which is on the conveyor. Okay, so after all those examples, let's talk about some basic concepts of the vibration. First, let's investigate what causes a system to vibrate. Let's first take a look at a simple pendulum. A mass M here is attached to the ground by a string with a constant length of L. And we, here we label it as uh, position 1. Because of gravitational force, mg, when the m is released, it starts to move downwards to position 2. So at position 1 here, the mass has potential energy because of the gravity. We label as Ep. Ep is gravitational force mg times H. H is a distance between position 1 and 2 in vertical direction. And H is calculated as a function of length L and the angular displacement of M, theta, times L minus 1 minus cosine theta. At position 2, since all the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, which is written as Ek, m times v squared. Here v is a velocity of uh, mass 2 at position uh, of mass at position 2. Because of the pos uh, velocity, the mass m will not stop and it's continue to vibrate, continue to move upwards until the position 3 on the left hand side. Therefore, the vibration is caused actually by the transition of the energy in one cycle.
This explains the fundamental uh, reason of the generation of vibration for a system. Now, another term is degree of freedom. By definition, the degree of freedom is the minimum number of independent coordinates which are required to determine completely the position of all uh, parts of a system. So here are there are two keywords. One is the minimum. The second is independent. Let's go over the pendulum again. Since the length of the string L is a constant, in order to determine the position of mass M, one way is we Defined position by a single parameter theta. Another way is to add put the zero position as the bottom position of the M and we label as X and Y. So anytime the position of mass can also be determined by two variables x and y however since the l is constant we always have a relationship between s, x, x and y that so in this sense the parameter x and y are not independent. Therefore, this system, we can only say it has one degree of freedom. Also, if the pendulum has three mass, M1, M2, M3. Here, L1, L2, L3 are all constants. So this, uh, this system has three degrees frame. So Although for each mass we, are, we are, can also has x, y to describe the position, three is a minimum to define completely the system. Another uh, very simple uh, system is a uh, spring mass. M and it's connected with the ground by a spring with a stiffness of K. 
and we can use a translational x to define the position of m. So this one has one degree of freedom. Okay. So after we know the concept of the degree of freedom, now there are two other uh, concepts, which is called discrete system and continuous The discrete system is defined that a system only has finite number of degrees of freedom. We use DOF to represent the word here. In contrast, the continuous system has infinite number of degree freedom. So for example the discrete system it can be represented by several lumped mass. So discrete system can also be uh, uh, mentioned as uh, lumped system. However when we investigate a uh, cantilever beam, when it vibrates, you have to define completely the position of this beam. It can vibrate like this, or it can vibrate like more funny shape, like this. Basically, the cantilever beam can be attributed to composed of infinite numbers of nodes. Therefore, it can have infinite, infinite shape to define the position of this beam. Therefore, a beam is normally uh, called continuous system here. Okay, the next step is to classify different types of vibrations. First, a vibration can be characterized as free and forced vibration like a spring mass system here if initially the mass M is put into a position that the spring here is elongated so when the release it start to vibrate in this direction here then we call it free vibration. In some cases, there's a force applied on the mass. This force can be an uh, impulse force, can be any periodic force, or can be any generalized force. Another classification is undamped and damped vibration. Here, a new term, damping, is introduced. So, for this system here, there's no, basically, there's no energy uh, loss because the potential energy by the stiffness and the 
kinetic energy are always uh, converting to each other and therefore the mass m will never stop however most of cases in reality there's always some damping force uh, in the industry a typical example uh, is like the lubrication on the guideways because there's a uh, oil uh, film between the moving and the stationary part and those friction causes the energy dissipation which we describe as a damping force so if normally we use this C and use this symbol to describe the uh, damping here now if we draw a force diagram of this mass here because of those forces it has an acceleration we describe as x double dot there has a force here and two forces on the left hand side one is kx Normally damping here is proportional, sorry, uh, proportional to the velocity, so x dot here. Then we are able to derive the equation motion m times the acceleration is equal to the total force here in more general cases we write on like this way so for this uh, equation uh, equation motion because and C, K, they are like constant. So this becomes a linear differential equation. So in this case, we call it is linear vibration. However, in some cases, instead of linear vibration, linear uh, equation here, if we have square somewhere, it become nonlinear vibration. So in our course here, uh, in this term, so in order to simplify the most of the practical problems, we uh, deal with uh, linear vibration in the most cases. Now here, uh, I want to show the uh, syllabus for for this course. I will send this word file to all of you uh, later Basically uh, We start from the course objective by learning uh, the content of this course you are able to uh, develop mathematical uh, vibration models for both lumped and continuous vibration systems Then trying to solve the uh, response of the system, you are able to get to know the physical behavior of a system under free or forced uh, vibration conditions. Later, we are going to talk some uh, practical uh, implementations, for example, uh, in the industry, how uh, do we uh, design and uh, analyze, uh, for example, a vibration absorber or uh, damping system to reduce the unnecessary vibrations and uh, we are going to I'm going to introduce some uh, practical uh, vibration measurement and uh, control system systems as well 
from all those uh, knowledge, later you are able to uh, independently, independently de design and analyze uh, systems from the uh, vibration uh, point of view to in order to optimize the uh, process and system to uh, to either reduce the unwanted vibrations or to make use of vibration to f facilitate your uh, application in the uh, future. This shows a relatively detailed uh, syllabus. It is divided by several parts. The first one is an uh, introduction about mechanical vibrations, which briefly uh, I talked in this lecture, and maybe some uh, some part will be covered in next lecture as well. Second, we start from the most uh, simplest case, which is a single degree of freedom system. Uh, there are several methods of formulate the equation motion for both underdamped and viscously damped uh, system. Then we are trying to uh, solve for the response under uh, either free vibration or and uh, some type of forced vibration as well. The third part, uh, spectral analysis provides a very useful method uh, and tool to analyze the time domain uh, response by converting to other uh, region, for example, the frequency domain. Here, we may use uh, some uh, MATLAB and Simulink to help analyze the system. Then we'll talk about uh, the multi-degree freedom systems, which is more common in reality. And here results into the eigenvalue problems and orthogonality conditions, uh, which means we are trying to get the natural frequency of a, uh, of a relatively complex system. And also we are trying to uh, get the free and forced vibration response as well. Then, the vibration control and measurement, we are talking about the working principle of uh, vibration isolation, vibration absorbers, and uh, some mostly and widely used uh, vibration exciters and sensors to get the uh, vibrational characteristics of a system. And we're also call, uh, going to talk about mount analysis, which is a very systematic industrial uh, application. Uh, in the part six, we are going to talk about continuous system. For example, for example, the vibration of a string and uh, the lateral vibration of beams. In the end, I want to introduce some uh, finite element analysis technique to help you to uh, develop the large model and how to analyze it. About textbook, I recommend the Mechanical Vibrations, the fifth edition written by, uh, written by uh, Rao, published in 2010. Yeah, uh, actually, if uh, normally the my lecture notes should be uh, enough to cover all the content, but if we are want to uh, get more uh, in this uh, area. You may have to look at uh, this book as well. About marking, T uh, tentatively, I want I, I will uh, give homework, like every for each topic. Maybe every two three lectures there will be one homework, and uh, this course will have uh, two midterms, one uh, project which is focused on a more uh, comprehensive example and there will be final exam as well. So here I want to mention about the uh, criteria here is I'm, I want to be very uh, strict for this that is late submission of homework and project report will not be accept, accepted. So the submission of homework has to be exact on the due date uh, before 4 p.m. In order to pass this course uh, the students must obtain minimum 50% from both the final exam itself and overall. 
okay then about the teaching method uh, I, I would like I prefer uh, using handwriting because uh, for this uh, vibration course there will be a lot of uh, mathematical derivation so by handwriting you may uh, understand uh, more clearly uh, from all those uh, equations and in some cases if needed I will use PowerPoint to give some illustrations the last thing is about uh, academic dishonesty is that all the midterms, homeworks uh, and project should be done individually and independently and you may go to the this website to check the university rule about this issue here okay thank you